What's up guys? Today we have a guest on the show, my buddy Patrick, owner of Momentous Builders. He's my personal contractor, he's my friend, he's also a client. He has done nearly a million dollars in his first year of business and I brought him on the show to explain the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between and uh, I think you're going to like this one. Patrick, thank you for being here. My my handsome friend, how are you doing today? I'm doing killer. It is a beautiful Friday right now. The sun's out and, uh, you know, living the dream is really where we're at right now. Mm. Speaking of which, have you done anything today to separate yourself from the, from the rest of the pack considering it's Friday? You know, I think that, you know, separating ourselves from the pack considering it's Friday, this is a great question because most people think it's Friday, you know, we got to take off and, or, you know, maybe they're waiting for that buzzer at 5 p.m., 4.30, 4 o'clock, right? I really try to operate every single day and every single week the same way in that it's another day to execute, right? Today, I did one more thing for my customer that has nothing to do with construction whatsoever, right? And so what did I do today to get ahead? I It's Friday. I literally operated like it's Monday, and I think that's a good idea. It's that I hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I think Fridays are, they're looked at very differently depending on who you speak to. A typical self-employed or entrepreneur will look at, uh, so, someone seasoned will look at Friday as another day to accomplish as much as needed to be accomplished and once you get to the to the higher echelons of entrepreneurship, which which fundamentally is just longer periods of time that people have grown and changed. That's all. That's all it really means. When I higher echelons of entrepreneurship, what that really means is people that have put a lot of time into their personal development and have grown and changed their thought pr- patterns and processes. So at that at that echelon friday is looked at as typically friday is looked at as a separation season it's what what can i do today to get further ahead from my competition for instance mm-hmm. my last appointment today is my accountant who is an hour away at six o'clock at night to be to to plan for well not to plan but to continue the plan for 2023 you know it's 2023 and a lot of people haven't even spoken to their accountants about 2023 yet that's see that that's the separation, that's the separation, and and that's why I asked you if you had done anything today uh, regarding um, separation. So you know, you know, but that's that's not what's important, nor what you're here to talk about. I actually, I just really want you to tell me about you. You know, tell me about you, but also tell me about what you have going on in your life. So so who's Patrick and what's Patrick doing? Yeah. So, I mean, who's Patrick? Most people think that, you know, that question is like, what do you do for a living? You know, what's your career, what's your profession? Yeah, it's everything. not. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really not. And we all have to, as, as humanity, as Americans, I think it's really common in, um, you know, America to think like, you know, what, who are you? It's like, oh, I'm a contractor, right? Guys, mm-hmm. anyone listening, my name is Patrick. I'm a contractor. I do high end uh, residential construction, uh, building, remodeling additions, things like that serving our customers right beautiful so that's work. what I do. oh thank you thank you so that's that's what i do is my profession right that's what puts money in my bank account but quite frankly it doesn't you know fill my heart up it doesn't always fill my cup up right we have these different balances and they create patrick right my fitness is a huge portion i love working out i'm at the gym seven days a week you know part of it's to take care of myself but at the other side it's like i love being in the gym i love being around other people getting after it I love working up a good sweat and looking over at the other side of the gym and there's someone sweating twice as much, right? Because we're all in this this zone. It doesn't matter where we're in our fitness journey, but we're all getting after it. So that's a that's an area that I love. Um, I snuck in a 20 minute walk today with the sun's out. I love getting outside, man. That's that's kind of who I am. I love hiking, you know, when I get a chance to go shoot some new guns. Just got back from Vegas. I shot an automatic shotgun. That was a first for me. <laughs> that was that your was shoulder. Thrilled. That was your shoulder yeah. after that one. <laughs> Dude, it, it was interesting. So it, it sounds so much worse, but you can only really get two to three good shots off unless you're a trained 
shooter. I mean, your audience knows you could probably rip off the clip of 15 rounds. Me, 155 pounds, three round burst. I'm almost pointing at the sun, you know? <laughs> There's a lot of climb uh, on the barrel on any weapon, let alone an automatic yeah. shotgun. Yeah, tw- automatic 12 gauge will get you. But so that that's kind of me. I'm I'm a I'm a you know, I do construction. I love that. I love delivering a a, a new finished space for people that are going to really transform their lives, but more importantly, you know, their family's lives. I think that construction and how we operate in our home, you know, it 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 extends well beyond you personally. It's your wife, if it's your kids, it's your significant other, it might be your mom, and it's your friends that come over, right? If you just redid your kitchen and you're gonna throw, you know, a dinner party. Well, you're giving a transformational, maybe in a lifetime memory to your friends, right? So that's the part that I truly just, you know, that's that's the passion right there. That's that's the purpose, and that's what drives me in my profession. And uh, that that's a little bit about me. I I think I kind of hit everything about it. I'm I'm 27, you know, relatively younger guy, but super hungry, and and have been in the personal development space for probably about 10 years now. So, okay. All right. So tell me, tell me about that. So tell me about the personal development space. Yeah. What's, so your, favorite, what's your favorite part of it? The, the favorite part of it, it's, it, it never ends, to be honest. Like it never ends. It started off when I was um, 18. I uh, started listening to our, 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 our man, Andy Frisella. Wow. MFC, 10 years our, ago. Our, our, back in 2016 or, well, it was right at the start. So 2015. So what is that? um eight years ago mm-hmm. before that i read thinking grow rich which really mm-hmm. just opened up my mind i think we all remember when we get into the personal development space that first book that were like ding that was the book for me um so and then i started to listen to nfcl right and then we started i started developing discipline these different ideas of showing up how to lead myself on on a, on a low level but things that stood me out right i stopped going out so much and partying I started getting really, really ingrained and caring about the type of work I do and the things that no one's that the things that I do when no one's looking. Right. And and then and then it and it shifts. Right. And you you master that thing and then you find another hole in your game. Right. Over the course of the last 12 months, it was really my spiritual and mental headspace. Right. It was how I was perceiving, living and feeling my emotions, you know, trying not understanding that I wasn't depressed, but I wasn't enjoying the journey. So. It, it ebbs and flows and I don't like you, it never ends because I'm in another phase right now and I guarantee in another two of the years I'm going to be in another phase and then all of a sudden I'm going to have kids and I'm going to be in a different phase and these things just change and we yeah. get better each and every time. Yeah. Every six months for, yeah. for, guy, for guys like you, it's going to, you're going to change like every three, every three to six months. Yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful though. I mean, think about, think about it. I mean, I know how far you've come in the past six months, but how far mm-hmm. have you come in the past six months? It's quite frankly, night and day, right? I remember this, I have a friend that goes to the gym, right? And we saw each other around for like three or four months when he started going and we never really talked, right? But you would see each other and all that stuff. Finally, we struck up conversation. We talked once and I started going down that journey of, you know, finding happiness within and identifying what's going on in my the stories I tell myself and everything. And then like two months later, he's like, dude, you seem so much happier. Like you seem so much lighthearted. I, I got to tell you like four months ago, if I, I, I you just look kind of angry or just, you know, pushing people off. Like you just kind of walked through life. He mm-hmm. literally said this. Mm-hmm. And those are the types of things that, you know, we don't always identify from the inside looking out, but mm-hmm. someone can see it night and day from the outside looking in. Yeah, especially if they don't spend every day around you. Maybe you bump into yeah. them and chat to them once a week or once a month or something. It's like when someone loses weight, right? The last person to notice is the person that's lost weight. The second to last person to notice is the people that they're around every day. But the first person to notice is the person that bumps into you like once a month or something along those lines. It's the same thing when it comes to personal development and, and it's, it's fundamentally energy. So, so mm-hmm. this person noticed it. What did he say? You're happier. Did he comment on anything else? Yeah. And, and, and oddly you know, I'm happier. I look approachable, right? I think that's a big one. I think we all see people in our lives and they might wave it, you know, and you might say hi to them, everything, but they don't look like a 
approachable, right? Like their, their arms were open, their hands were open, inviting you in to their lives and to be a part of it, right? And that's yeah. a huge thing about energy and how you show up for people. And we don't always realize unless you go down this personal journey and of awareness, what t- what you're presenting out in the world, right? And he was, you know, it, it went from us really having a brief conversation and me wanting to be friends with him because I, I saw what kind of guy he was. He was a great guy. I enjoyed the conversation. So now it's where it's mutual. Like he's texting me, I'm texting him. It's because I've changed and my energy is honestly close to the same level he is up higher, inviting, nice, kind, filled with love, happiness. That's that's a quite a journey in the past six months, huh? It wasn't all uphill. It never is. So these types of experiences where you know you've been in the personal development realm for a decade, which is huge. I mean, that's a thirty percent of your life, right? Yeah. You know, thirty five percent of your life because you're twenty seven, something along those lines. How does that play into your your business that you have? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about the business outside of like high-end remodeling, like tell us how personal development is like a polarity in building your business, which I know that you're new to, but maybe you can expand on all this. Yeah. So we, it's not a, it's not a direct correlation, meaning that you don't see the results of how you develop personally in your business overnight. Right. And also you can be fairly successful and have zero awareness, you know, not this is physical, true. not have any physical health or anything like this. But I love the this saying that we rise and fall to the level of personal develop like to our level of personal development. You hear a very or another saying is we rise and fall to our level level of leadership. And the reason for that is because we might get a great job in, we might get this in, but our personal systems of where we're at drag us down, right? So for me, how it's played out for business, I like you said, I started this personal journey out really young, right? Most people go through this at 35 or 40 or later in life, right? 40, yeah. Yeah. So what I've seen is, and, and being an RT with you and hearing different stories of, of guys talk, podcast, learning from the best, right? Is that they hit a plateau somewhere on 30, 35, 40, maybe it's they're going gray. They don't get to spend time with their kids. And there's some type of trigger where they just like, they just need to change. Right. And it's, and it sparks it. And then there's like two or three years. And then all of a sudden their sales and business explode. Right. For me, what I'm doing right now, it's kind of happening at the same time. My business is, is building the brand, gaining momentum while I'm also developing personally. So I firmly believe that my personal development that I've seen hasn't materialized yet in business yet, at least not to the extent of the work that I've put in. Now, I've had amazing conversations. I have great connections. I have people, I have homeowners that, you know, we follow follow meetings and it's like, you were a joy to talk to. I just, you know, I'm I'm friends with all my clients. Let's, let's put that out there. Like I'm friends with all my clients. Isn't it nice to be friends with clients and like have good relationships? Yeah. But it, and then part of that is how well you manage yourself. Like, are you showing up for them? Right. Yeah. You show up to the, like for me, do I show up to the job site curmudgeon and this and that, or do I show up with a smile on my face and arms open, inviting, happy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my first year in business and quite frankly, all the events before that, before I really started getting into the energy side of personal development, I would say there was a lot of forcing, a lot of pushing, a lot of hardships of put onto myself and the mentality behind it. And what I'm starting to see is that things are just starting to fall in line right now in, in going into year and two in business and not always materially, but things have just been progressing at a steady rate. And I can see where this is all going. And material is always the last thing to fall into place. Exactly. And I think that's the message of my rant right now is that the material and the like physical manifestation of everything you work on in personal development comes, it might be six months, it might be a year, it might be two years. For me, all this stuff is really going to come a year or two years because my brand and my business isn't built yet. It's not full speed yet. Like I don't have tons of traction yet. 
So my momentum, instead of growing at a one to, you know, instead of going a hundred miles an hour or rate of we're increasing 10 miles per hour per hour, you know, per, per minute, right? I'm going to be increasing 20 miles per hour per minute. So my rate of change is going to be much, much higher. And that's what I've seen personally in the last six months. You're, you're touching on so many huge things here. Okay. So you, you, you've been in it for how long? About a, about a year and a half now on personally, your own? Oh, yeah. Personally owning my own business on my own. I'm a year and a half into it. So tell me, tell me about year one. What was that like? Honestly, it was really rough. Good. I mean, good. Yeah. Like talk, tell me about it. Yeah. So if you look at my P and L, it looks like fairy tales and rainbows, right? We did 950 my first year. It seems amazing on the outset. On paper, it all looks good. But what you don't realize is that when I was rolling up to job sites, you know, I was flying by the seat of my pants, you know, sweating with uh, you no know, no heat on and it's 50 degrees out, right? Like just worrying about the, the 110 different things, you know, not showing up, not being a good leader for the job site, but checking the boxes, right? So I am quote unquote being successful and achieving and, and knocking out the objective, but doing it from a high stress, high force state where there really wasn't too much um, enjoyment in the labor of it. There wasn't too much enjoyment in the journey of it. And that just, it. looking back on it, it's sad, right? Because I did so many great things that I, I could have really enjoyed right now. I truly believe that. Like what? For example, when I was building out a, a kitchen last year, right, and and a bathroom at the same time, and there, my these when I say kitchen and bathroom, these are very very detailed, larger than just a bitch kitchen and bathroom project. They were both um, almost a quarter million dollars each. So the bathroom was a quarter you know, million. Yeah, because the whole exterior of the house was rotted out. We had to build. We had to you know support the whole exterior of the wall. There was mold going into the bedroom. Um, the subfloor is completely gone. So we rebuilt like a quarter of her house, right? A lot of unknowns. So like the stress and the anguish, there would just be days I'd wake up at one o'clock in the morning thinking about the job, right? I, I would be tired all the time and a burden. I would make mistakes. I would forget to follow up with people. My personal systems weren't there. And listen, I did a great job, but it was from a place of just like anguish, right? And there was beautiful moments because when the project started to end and I could actually breathe again, you know, and, and reflect on everything that's going on, all the goodness that I did and reflect on the good times, I'd go back and do it again in a heartbeat. But I didn't have the capacity to enjoy it in the moment because of where I was at spiritually, emotionally. And quite frankly, that that takes a toll on your physical health too. That is a very... <laughs> That's a very enlightened uh, comment right there. Do you mind explaining more about it? Do you, what, what do you mean? What do you mean you weren't able to enjoy it because of the way you were feeling? Can, can you explain that? Yeah. So many times, Chris, we go through life and we have a to-do list, right? And the to-do list gets us to our goal. So all we're thinking about is checking the boxes, checking this, checking that, right? You know, sometimes we just check the boxes without smelling the roses is the common saying so if i want to go like i i physically there's times i buy lunch for my guys pretty much once a week on every single job chill hang out 30 45 minutes we talk we bond you know whatever comes up we're talking about the kids talk about family it's great right but there was times in that moment where like i couldn't detach because i was so worried about checking the next box to come that for 10 out of the 30 minutes I was in my own head. Like I wasn't giving my guys the time that they deserve. You weren't present. I, I wasn't present, man. And like they were talking about amazing things because I I I couldn't find I wasn't finding happiness within, right? I wasn't finding happiness within the journey. And you know, you you told me this one time, right? It's there's no there's no really finish line in life, right? Because here's the reality, right? If, if birth is the, the ultimate start line, that puts death as the ultimate finish line. And why the hell are we racing towards death and the finish line? Why are we focused on getting to that end result and what it's going to do and all these different things? Meanwhile, if you ever achieved anything, 
no one ever really remembers what happens after the finish line. They don't, it doesn't matter. Like if you get a new bench press PR, right? You're thinking about, like you remember the fondness of when that bar is bouncing off your chest and going up, right? Or in the struggle and the push and the pain and the anguish. Like that's the fond memory. Like that's why we're happy about it, right? If you're in a race, it's during the race, what happens in the race that really cements that memory in and makes it cherishable. It's all these things that happen along the journey, right? Like when you finish a dinner, right? You're never like, oh my God, like after dinner, your memory isn't after dinner at the finish line. Your memory is during the meal, enjoying it. So we should enjoy the journey in life, no matter what it is, no matter what the struggle is, because it's all a blessing. Because one day it's going to end, right? And we're not going to be able to reflect on anything. Yeah. The finish line is constantly evolving because there's really no such line. Yeah. It's all determined by what we what we desire and, and how well we could be uh, accepting of what has been done. I mean, it's a very general statement, but it's the truth. So, all right. So you got all this awareness and, and, and borderline enlightenment when it comes to uh, your thought processes. So tell me, it sounds like if you could go back to year one, mm-hmm. it sounds like, and, and tell me if I'm wrong, maybe the biggest thing you would change in, in year one of business would be more present in the moment, let alone with your people, or, or is there something else? I would say being more present in the moment and feeling my emotions of what's going on in my head, right? Because like I said, at that point in time, my first year in business, I had six years of worrying about, I mean, of working on dialing my personal systems, right? Mm-hmm. I, year one in business, as hard as it ever got, I always got it all done. Mm-hmm. You know, I always checked the box. My discipline was there. You know, thank God in business, I didn't have any catastrophes that set me behind. You know, I'm pretty darn good with numbers. I had a great education on finances. I never over leveraged myself all these different things, right? So I had a beautifully blessed first year, both on the front end and the back end. But for anyone getting into business, you're going to get your teeth kicked in and you're going to hit with surprises, whether it's over workload or not finding any work, right? And it's what you do and how you feel about that when it happens in the stores you tell yourself. Because that's going to, you're going to look back on your first couple of years in business and you're going to say either they were a nightmare or they were a joy. And honestly, all it comes down to is your perception, the story you tell yourself. Yeah. So if you could recap it in one sentence, what would you do differently in year one? Enjoy the journey. Be present. Yeah. 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 I shit. I mean, in year 15, I could say that about year 14 because mm-hmm. it's because it's constantly evolving, right? Like being present in year 14, right? And being present in year one are vastly different presences. However, being present's the key, enjoying its key. You know, like, like for instance, like this interview, Mm -hmm. we're both completely present, right? And you're telling your story in a very professional, well-articulated presentation. And that's the key. When you, whenever you're in a situation in life, let alone business is to just be locked on, whether you're fucking framing a door, talking to a customer on a podcast, dealing with your accountant, hanging out with your family. And, and to be honest with you, these are the biggest problems for me anyways. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I do, which I know I've taught you is when I need to be present, you can't get a hold of me. These are off. And, And look at this, Chris, look how messed up this world is for everyone listening. Chris just held up two phones, right? This is how crazy we have to go sometimes to protect our own mental space. (laughs) I have two phones too. (laughs) One's for work and one's for personal. Mm -hmm. And that's how far, you know, some of us have to go to protect our headspace. And quite frankly, I think a lot of people would benefit to it, even if they don't do it now. Yeah. Yeah. Separate it. Definitely. I took too long to separate it. Yeah. Chris, what if, so you're here 15. Yeah. What would be your first, what would be your biggest learning lesson or recommendation to yourself in year one? Yeah, drop the ego. I see my, my situation was a little different because I got thrown into entrepreneurship. It wasn't my decision. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I ever told you the story, but I had this huge ego as I had just gotten out of combat. It's hard to explain, but 
there's a difference between people that go to war and people that see combat. Mm. Combat is is war. Combat is fighting. Combat's killing. Combat's all the bloody shit you see in the movies. So I had just gotten back from my second stent in combat, and I, I had done 25 months, 26 months of combat in my career, and I had gotten out, and I fell into being a personal trainer, and then that job was taken away from me. It wasn't my decision. And I, I had to make things work. So I started personal training on the side on my own. And um, I had a huge ego. I had a huge ego. I thought I was better than everyone. Mm. And because I had played God less than six months prior to that, I decided who lived, who died. Mm -hmm. I was the boss. You know, I was walking down the street in downtown Baghdad, the capital of Iraq, in a war zone in charge. Of, mm. of my eight guys. I was the boss. I was 23, 24 years old. You know what I mean? Like I had eight armed men with rifles and machine guns and an interpreter at my begging call. And if I made a decision, it happened. So that ego coming out of the military hindered me for probably about 30 years. You know, so however, what, six years out of the military. So those first six years of business, you know, I just thought I was God's gift and my talent got me pretty far. You know, I was making a quarter million dollars in my twenties net, um, with talent. I was really good with nutrition and I still am. I just don't do nutrition for anyone. Um, I do my nutrition, <laughs> but anyways, after I started letting go of my ego is when I achieved my lifelong dream at eight years in business. And I owned a gym and I had 60 people working for me, but I had to let go of my ego to get there. And it took me six, six years or so before that ever happened. Yeah. So year one and year six and the years between that, I would go back and sit myself down and say, Chris, fucking drop the ego. Now, there's a huge difference between having an ego and not understanding it and having an ego and understanding it. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand it then. It just controlled me. Now I, like every other human being, have an ego. However, I understand mine. Oh yeah. And, and that's the key. You have to, mm -hmm. everybody has egos. Everybody has an ego, but understanding it mm -hmm. is this level of personal development, uh, understanding of psychology and patience that 99.99% .99 of people will never have because their ego controls them and they don't even realize it. So that's me, but it's, it's different for all of us, you know? So as you roll into year two, you know, I don't want you to tell me what you're going to do in year two. I want you to tell me what small changes are you making to ensure that you continue to move the needle forward? Yeah. Year two, it's definitely got to be personal systems. It's coming up with an organized day that is not on the whim of external situations constantly. So like I said, year one, I got it all done, right? But there was times where like my plan went out the door because this happened over here. Construction, things come up, right? I could be 30 minutes away thinking I'm in office time and a plumber or carpenter is like, hey, Patrick, we ran to this condition. Like, what do you want to do? Or like, hey, listen, I'm going to be there in 30 minutes uh, to start working, right? Those things come up because we work as a, as a general contractor, as a, as a builder, we work with a lot of subcontractors, different companies that are not always under our direct control from an employee stance. I can't, you know, control when they're going to show up to the job site. I can schedule meetings. I can confirm them and all these different things. So there's a lot of chaos in it, right? However, that's also a poor excuse to not be organized at the same time. We see that a lot in construction. It's the excuse that guys aren't showing up on time. It's the excuse that you had to do this emergency late night meeting or the, this excuse that you had to blow off all this stuff because X, Y, Z, right? It's because our personal systems and our standards aren't set right and set for our, the people we work with. So year two, 
I got big hairy goals, right? Talking about an ego. I got an ego too, except I know where, like my ego is to be the best, you know, builder, contractor in Northern Westchester. Like that's, that's my ego, right? I'm going there. To get there, there's a lot of hurdles to and and checks and accomplishments and, and growing to do. And I need to make sure that I'm organized. So that way, when I'm in a 30 minute meeting, I'm grabbing lunch from my guys and the plan was to give them my time. I can actually give them my time and not be answering emails, not be on the phone, right? And those are going to greatly help me. Social media, right? Growing my social media every single day. There has to be a personal system on how I actually do this. So that way it doesn't take 20 hours of my week. And maybe it's only a couple, a few, right? Something that's manageable where I can actually still do my job as a general contractor. And I'm not staying up to 12 o'clock at night or 1 a.m. and waking up at 5 a.m. Well said. Time management, controlling the day mm-hmm. rather than the day controlling you. And that's that's also high level shit. So thank you for explaining that. Yeah. I think I think we need to do a part two. What do you think? Yeah, because I mean, we talked a whole bunch about personal, you know, personality in business, but the reality is, is that if there is one thing a new business owner should have dialed in, like non-negotiable, it'll make your life so much easier. Like put it on the number one spot is know your numbers, both from, you know, your costs going into jobs, whether, you know, for me, it's building projects, right? It could be, you know, training a client. It could be selling a widget, right? Know your cost, know what, how much time you're going into there, right? And then bookkeep it. Like, Every single week, every month, right? Like my books are done every single week. My my um, P and L is out by the first end of the first week of every single month, right? And when you do that, everything just lines up. That is not something you want to be playing catch up in January of the next year. You know, flying by the seat of your pants, realizing you're missing half your receipts, and your accounting's filing extensions to get you filed in June to find out you have a twenty grand nut to pay for taxes. And there's no money in the bank account because you don't even know how much money you're making. That's a hurdle that you can easily avoid if you just start from day one. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I wish I knew that day one. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I think that's one reason why I teach that sort of stuff now. And things like you understanding that are monumental. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you and, and excellent advice, dude. So well, we'll definitely do a part two. Let me ask you something. Um, I mean, do you want to do a part two? I would love a part two. All right. So in the meantime, if anyone wants to follow your journey, which you put out great content, especially when it comes to the thought processes around renovations and simple things that homeowners should know, um, wh- where can they find you? Yeah. So the most content we're putting out right now is our YouTube channel. We're really trying to grow it you know, really trying to help people out there. That's momentous building on YouTube. Really easy to search us and find us. Uh, in there, you're going to learn anything from, you know, construction advice, how to handle some, you know, contractors, detailed information on construction contracts. These things will really help you on your next build. And uh, some project stories too. Then we have our Instagram, Mr. Project Patrick. That's where you're going to find us. Put out some fun things out there. And, you know, that's the, that's the personal journey we're on. You got any other place that people you want to ch- people to check you out, like Facebook or LinkedIn? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. You guys can message me on Facebook. I'm an open book. And then on LinkedIn, Patrick Robertson. Um, you can find me there. Those are great places too. Awesome. Awesome. Well said today, dude. Well done. Um, grateful for you, dude. Grateful for your time. Grateful for your perspective. And I appreciate you. Yeah, no, Chris, this was a... Uh... This was awesome. I'm so happy that you invited me on the show. Hope the audience got some value because I certainly enjoyed our chat today here. Good. We'll make sure you come back for for round two and uh, and and tell us a little bit more about year two next time. How does that sound? Oh yeah, we're gonna have a load of information. This is gonna be a fun year. All right, dude. Well, listen, you have yourself a good Friday, and uh, I'll chat with you soon. Thank you for your time today. Take care, Chris.